Hi, I'm just going to give a quick uh, overview of what the difference is between um, Candy Machine V1 and Candy Machine V2 um, and just sort of what that means uh, for if you're making a bot for it to bot the uh, the candy machines or if you're just, I guess, making a candy machine but generally for the bots. So the first thing is um, I'm just going to, you know, so, so this is the channel for the Blockchain API. Uh, you can go to theblockchainapi.com and uh, we just have several things for making, uh, for interacting with candy machines and botting them. Uh, so listing all of them, that's updated every 15 minutes, getting their NFTs, getting metadata, minting from them, um, and then also getting the version. Uh, you can see here to get the version of it. So so now I'll just quickly say, what is the difference between uh, V1 and V2? Um, basically, uh, the first version, um, was released, uh, I don't know, something like October, September, I don't know, um, and, um, or maybe even July, I think. And uh, generally, the idea, the, the purpose of that originally was, instead of you sending me soul, and then I send you an NFT back, uh, and then, well, at least that's what I promised, and then I run away with your soul, um, that instead of that happening, to solve that, they just created a smart contract where you have the NFTs, um, you know, effectively an escrow, they're not really an escrow, but, and then what happens is you send money to that contract and you get an NFT back guaranteed. Um, so there, there's still rug pulls with candy machines, but um, but that's the problem it was trying to solve. Okay, and then so what happened was people would create these, they were heavily botted, so it, Candy Machine V2 has a couple anti-bot measures, uh, and then also just one sort of uh, difference in the way it's stored in the blockchain. So I'll start with the, actually the second one I listed, the way it's stored in the blockchain. So earlier, I'll show you on these docs, um, if you're getting, there was this thing called a candy machine ID and a config address. So they were originally with V1, they're two separate things. With V2, they're the same thing. And so basically what that, I'll explain why that was for V1. It's not really relevant anymore, but I'll explain it. Um, there were sort of two accounts stored on the blockchain. The first one had all of the NFTs of the candy machine. And then the second one, that, uh, the second one had the, uh, configuration of it. So, um, actually the config address corresponded to the, con but it had some, some information and then all of the NFTs, the candy machine ID con corresponded to, like the settings of the candy machine. Um, that was V1. And the idea was that you could upload the NFTs to the blockchain once, and then you could create many different candy machines that point to that upload. So it was just an abstraction that nobody used. Um, now there's no difference in V2, at least the way we treat it in the API. So there's no difference because it's just stored as one thing. Um, so the candy machine is not two accounts, not two separate ones, it's just one. So that's the, um, that's, that's the reason there. Okay, so now onto botting. Basically, um, there's sort of two anti-bot measures that probably won't really work or do much. Um, the first one, yeah, I mean, it worked by definition. It's called whitelisting. Um, so whitelist, basically, uh, you know, you can whitelist a specific address. They can mint from the candy machine. They can even do so before it goes live. Um, you can limit, you know, the amount of tokens to each address, that sort of thing. I say it doesn't really do much about against bots because, um, I mean, if you're doing a public sale, uh, then that's one thing. But if you're doing a private one, then there's nothing to bot. So, I mean, that by definition isn't can't be botted, um, and uh, and it's not something that people would really want to to bot anyways. Um, but anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, the second thing is uh, this thing called Civic, and uh, you know it's just a form of Kapacha. So um, this can already be, this already is being bought and can be bought in. Um, and all it is, is basically there's sort of two things. So one is the first time you're, if, if civic is enabled, so you can, you have to enable it first. Uh, it's called a gatekeeper. So there's other gatekeepers. You don't have to use civic, but you can. And basically what happens is that you go to mint and uh, civic pops up. They make you sign a little transaction. They pay for the fee. And then they uh, sign the mint. Okay, now you're, now you're pre-approved, and then you can mint from it. And then um, then there's this second attribute, which is um, called expire on use, um, which basically says um, you fill out the capacha, the civic sort of capacha, the first time. 
and then does it expire after you use it expire on use, right? Um, if it's true, um, then uh, yeah, you have to redo a Kapacha, uh, which might just be checking a box the second time. Um, and if it's false, then once you verify the recivic, you can just mint like a normal V1 candy. So, um, and if you want to see whether or not Gatekeeper is enabled um, or anything like that, uh, you can use this endpoint, get a CM's metadata. That will, if it's V2, so you have to make sure you're saying V2 here because the default's V1. If it's V2, that will tell you whether or not Gatekeeper is enabled. It will also tell you whether or not uh, there's a whitelist. It'll tell you also whether or not um, expire on use is true or false. So, um, so yeah, and for, for a mint from a CM endpoint, um, that doesn't that does not currently work if Gatekeeper is enabled. Um, but other people have gotten it to work. And the issue is that Civic can take a while, can take like 30 seconds, right, to confirm the transaction and everything. So what happens is everybody's doing it manually. Uh, it takes 30 seconds for them. Uh, basic, and, and the people that they're trying to prevent from botting it now have an extra 30 second head start. Um, so it, it really does the opposite. So I, I, it'll be, you know, sort of TBA if it will actually be used, but I don't think it will be. Um, yeah, I think whitelist will be more common, and then they'll just be a sort of free-for-all after that. Okay. Um, yeah, so thanks so much, and uh, have a great day.